Marion, when you're set um, with the text, uh, we'll get going and we can circle back to Susan and welcoming yeah. in her um, to this committee. I hope everybody saw the history lesson um, as best as I could remember it from the first meetings that we had. Mm -hmm. um, I sent out an email last week giving a little bit of a history lesson because there was some question about how members are added. Oh, to this that. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, got to remember your history here. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Kathy, I'm a little off my game. I'm used to starting all my meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> um, so I love the Pledge of Allegiance. We can say it if you want. No, no, no. We actually have it on a recording. So we have it all set at our school. Um, Kathy, how about this? Why don't you start with the composting plan for Hadley Elementary? Sure. So uh, uh, um, I don't know if you guys looked at it or not. I sent everybody a copy of the proposal. Um, so I sent that to Annie McKenzie on February 1st. Um, I, I first heard back from her like, okay, I'll let you know in a week or so. And then about a week later, just recently, I heard from her again saying, basically, I'm up to my eyeballs in all these different things. Um, I'm not going to be able to get to this till after the February break. So get to this means she's going to talk to the people. I, I, the way she said it is she's going to talk. I'm going to talk to the people involved and we'll see what's what. So I'm hoping to hear from her, you know middle of March, mm -hmm. beginning of March. I mean, you know, we'll see. So the um, thing that's going on in town is everybody, all departments are trying to get their budgets in, which is why she's up to her eyeballs. Right, she break, said she was applying for, yeah. yeah, yeah, it just sounded like a lot. So yeah. I, I just uh, answered her, I understand, thanks for letting me know. All right. Um, there, you know, there's, I feel like if I'm willing to work with her, then hopefully she'll be willing to work with us and we'll get this thing going. But there's no point in coming down, you know, anyway. Yeah, and seeing the plan that you developed and hopefully trying to implement it starting in March, it seems reasonable. <laughs> it's tricky around personnel issues and supplies sure. and all that. But well, and, and maybe it will end up being an Earth Day, you know, closer to Earth Day, and we can kind of use that to generate yep. enthusiasm. And I, you know, I was very gung ho about I'm going to get this going at the elementary school, and then like two weeks later at the high school, and yep. forget that plan. I'm going to get this going at the elementary school give it as long as it takes. I want to really get it solidly going. And if that means I have to man those bins for a few months, then I'll do it. But I want to get the kids in the habit and then hopefully it will not be so hard for staff to take over from there. Um, and once it's going at the, at the elementary school, then I'll dig in at the high school and, and get it going there. But um, so the high school is just on hold as far as I'm concerned for now, maybe, maybe next year. Well, you know, and this is a massive change for them, but you know, this is promising. So well, sometimes, you know, change that happens slowly sticks better than something that you try to rush and then it just falls apart. I mean, I, I was in on a zoom meeting today of various you know, people like me that are, have either already implemented school food waste diversion plans or are trying to from all over the state. And um, it, you know, it's hard. Everyone, even schools where they, the only town who's really got it going very successfully, even since um, the pandemic is Arlington. Hmm. Everybody else is either struggling to initially get it going. Some schools aren't even recycling. Hmm. Um, and other schools had it going before, uh, you know, school closed, but are having trouble uh, getting it going now. So I feel like we want it and we want it bad, but, you know, we got to work with the people that we have to work with. So. Um, Thanks for that's, that's what I have to say about that. 
Thanks for checking in and it'll be in folds with all of that. Yeah. I have a two minute report on Andrew Glace. He's an energy engineer out of Amherst who has done work for Amherst, Bernerston, Leverett, and some other local communities. And he's very generously offered to come in and um, do an energy audit of the Goodwin Library. He's not starting with the schools or something that's very complicated. Uh, one of the easier buildings, and he is setting aside the newer buildings because energy audits shouldn't be necessary. And uh, Carolyn Brennan knows about this, and I'm also working with Gary Berg, who is involved with the Municipal Building Committee. And we will get Andrew the information he needs, he'll do some walkthroughs, and then he will be seeking grants for the town to maybe improve the lighting, possibly the heating, possibly the insulation. So um, I will keep you posted as this unfolds, but it was a kind offer for him. Yeah. And we'll see, so. So is g &L Energy Services, is that his business? Yeah, he is the G in g and yep. Okay. Yep. Um, when, I he, talk, he, when I talked to Carolyn, I pushed it that we do it for um, Town Hall because they pretty much have a plan for what's going to happen to Goodwin. Okay. And Town Hall had a uh, survey, and I think it would be useful to have a second one that would be more thorough and they could compare it and say, okay, look, this is a serious problem, or, you know, this guy said it was serious, but this other one doesn't, or, and get a comparison because the town likes to compare things. Yeah. Um, I have a question about that. So is all of our municipal energy or electricity or energy usage, has that been submitted now to green communities? No, I just got the schools last week and it's amazing. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 different categories of energy coming in to the schools. Wow. And, and gas I for the buses and gas for the mowers and Heating oil for the elementary school, heating oil for Hopkins, oil and gas for the district, which also includes the superintendent's office, and how much natural gas they use in therms for the two different schools, and how much electricity they use for the two different schools in kilowatt hours. And then electricity central is a thing I don't really understand, but the solar development in the area give some of the money they make from that as a uh, reduction in the school's energy costs. Wow. So who has the lowdown on that arrangement? Carolyn or? I'm working on it. Yeah. Can I add something to this energy audit? Sure. So in the context of inviting people to the climate day, which we'll come to in a minute, um, I spoke with um, a person who works for UMass, that it has a center that's focused on energy efficiency and renewables and basically does free audits to anyone who asks for it um, for you know, various installations. And um, she told me that uh, she had approached um, apparently the water treatment plant or something like that for Hadley yeah um it didn't go anywhere it, like first it was like oh yeah that sounds good and then it didn't go anywhere probably for capacity reasons but she said they have a process whereby they discover leakages or, or inefficiencies whatever that um once there they can isolate or show them um it just saves people a lot um in and so i'm wondering if I don't know who to contact, but I basically, I have the person's contact at UMass that I can, you know, forward. It's just, I don't know who is the right person to I'll do it. That up let, and let me work with you that, on that, Susie, because I can get you to the right person at DPW to think about that. And I already have numbers from the very, the different outbuildings that the town has, if you will, on the very sewage okay. plants and plants. What's the name of the board or whoever, whatever it is at UMass? It's not a board. Um, it's an, basically an extension service okay. to communities. But it is um, the person who 
told me about this is Lauren Matizen or Matizen or whatever. I don't know if you pronounce her last name, M-A-T-T-I-S-E-N. And I can forward to you um, to both. Is it L-O-R-E-N, L-A-U-R-E-N? L-A-U-R-E-N. Anyway. This is a great idea. This is how California got started with a whole bunch of their energy programs because the person who was running the water treatment plant in San Jose or some big city was like, you know, we are using a lot of electricity here. Let's yeah. see what we can do to reduce this usage and just all kinds of things, positive things blossomed out of that. Yeah, I guess, I guess water- it, it, it needs a little bit handholding, like what you're doing with the schools, you know, until it's sort of because they're all overbooked, right? Everybody is maxed out. So it needs just somebody to sort of handhold that until it's done so that it well, it, yeah. it's carried well, through. Well, do that for us for free. Yeah, for so, free and for apparently surprisingly big savings, additional savings than a regular audit. So just so everybody's tuned in with what's going on with green communities. And hi, Susan, welcome. Glad you're here. Oh, you're on mute. You're, you're, you're muted. You're muted, Susan. Mute, uh, Susan, you're muted. Oh, here's my sorry. And sorry, I'm late. And yeah, so I'm very excited to hear we're we're on the track to becoming a green community. We we're are, sorry. and just so everyone here knows, we have employed Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and they're the ones who are controlling all the energy audits. We're actually working with EverSource. They're sending in their um, sort of vetted auditors. So for a number of our buildings, we have audits like right on the edge. So before we start lining up lots of different auditors, just be yeah. aware that I spoke with Mark uh, Rabinsky actually in Eversource even today, and they're they're starting to schedule people to come in. So as Did part they of our- they hire though? Do we have to pay them? PVPC no. offered us kind of a grant um, in order to help expedite our application for a green community. So do be aware. Now, it's not a bad thing, any engineer will tell you, to have an audit and a second audit, like yeah. a check, double check. So not the worst. Yeah. So, Jack, just on that point, my, my yeah. understanding was that they have some special thing that tends to, like, identify additional sources of savings. So I just thought, hey, if it's for free and we get more out of it, all the better. So I'm all for that. Oh, wonderful. Marion, was that a hand up or were you adjusting your camera? I was adjusting my. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just thank making you. sure. And honestly, I'd like to hire you all as students. You're pretty good about the hands. Um, we also have another guest joining us for this month and maybe next month. Um, and that's Michelle, Michelle Morris Friedman. You probably know some of the people in this room and many of us know you and Michelle, if you just want to share your role, well, like, who are you for people who don't know you and like, why are you here? Okay. Um, well, I've also been on for about 10 minutes, but I had my camera off. Um, I'm here because um, I'm part, I'm on the board of the Friends of Lake Warner and the Mill River. And we have for quite a few years participated in the Sustainability Festival in Amherst, which is not happening this year. And we are really thrilled that Hadley is doing something. So we would like a presence. I'm also on the Mosquito Opt-Out Committee um, in Hadley. And um, I'm happy to, you don't have to jump ahead to that agenda item, Jack. I'm happy to listen to what's going on because this is something I've been an environmentalist since I was 10 and that's a long time ago. Um, well, um, welcome. Yeah, I'm glad you're yeah. in with us and I'm glad you're working with us. I think the more that some of these town committees can unite and unify, whether it's the cultural council or <clears throat> the MOOC, the Mosquito mm -hmm. Opt-Out Committee or council, all the better. So thank you. There and is one other important um, meeting. When, I think when there's one other, oh, sorry, sorry. No, can, can, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that I think there's a, an important meeting tonight for next week i think next week. okay thank you <laughs> yeah, that's Just why we could use this, that's why we could use the zoom link because we weren't um pushed out by the mosquito people oh, okay good excellent 
And the mosquito people are, I believe, meeting in the afternoon, the next two meetings. Oh, uh, good. Okay. Um, if I'm not keeping them all in my head. <laughs> um, the one other thing I wanted to say before you get on discussing Climate Day, I noticed you were um, thinking of whom to invite, and I had some ideas for that also. Okay. Uh, okay, good. We're going to take a little detour, Susie. Uh, we'll go with Bruce and Jane for an update. Where are things at with that bylaw for the um, um, plastic bag ban, especially with Springtown meeting looming in three months? Sure. All right. Um, Jane, uh, Jane can jump in at any time, uh, but I've been working with her on drafting a bylaw, so I just shared a screen, and I can send this uh, in an email, but uh, we we have a process that we wanted to, uh, Jane wanted to uh, work on. So we don't want it to uh, be widely distributed yet because there could be additional changes, including any input from tonight. But uh, basically the spotlight we have in front of you um, was uh, borrowed heavily from East Hampton uh, by law, which uh, included both plastic uh, ban as well as um, food containers and straws. So it was easier to, um, modify that to Hadley uh, than looking at some other towns. And basically, uh, as you can see the scope, um, that's just basically an introductory uh, paragraph that we can uh, alter. Uh, uh, Jane um, uh, came up with that, which is a combination of different uh, ideas uh, put together in a paragraph. Um, so I'm not gonna read everything, but uh, it's pretty much what you would expect. Then like all the bylaws in this area, uh, you start off with definitions. So these uh, definitions are um, pretty much uh, standard uh, across the state and maybe the, the country, but most of the town bylaws that I've looked at um, have these definitions. Uh, some are a little bit different. Um, and I'm just trying to... Um, pull, uh, let's see. Uh, in terms of um, other definitions, we have uh, several uh, categories. One's a retail establishment, which includes sales, outlets, stores, shops, and other places of business which sell or convey merchandise directly to the end consumer. Um, it isn't limited to grocery stores, markets, restaurants, pharmacies, liquor stores, takeout food, et cetera. Then we have another um, category called retail food establishment, um, which is uh, pretty much the same thing. I'm not exactly sure what the difference, differences are, but I, I didn't want to spend all this time reading through each one. And then um, we have shopping bag definitions. And the one uh, I just want to point out the produce bag, which is uh, when you go into a grocery store and you uh, and you uh, get vegetables and put them into um, another plastic bag, usually without handles. Uh, we're trying to make that also uh, compostable. And then we all know about the paper bags, the reusable check bags, which we're all familiar with. Hey, Bruce, can I can I quickly ask a question? Yeah. What is it that that is most useful. I don't think any of us are qualified to alter anything on these definitions. I'm just sure. wondering what's the most useful input from us that you could use at this point. Um, well, Jane might have some ideas. I think for the most I part, uh, I don't see section here. Anyhow, uh, without going through each one, I think uh, I'm just going to talk generally uh, uh, in terms of. Um, all the establishments, we want to make sure uh, it covers nonprofit organizations, uh, religious organizations such as churches, synagogues, mosques, as well as schools and, and town buildings like the senior uh, center. So these, this bylaw would uh, um, basically include all those uh, groups of organizations and businesses in town. So there's no exemption there. And the only other uh, exemption is um, uh, plastic wrap, which you would find uh, like we use at home. 
that was commonly listed as an exemption in many towns. And uh, we went, uh, um, Jay and I went back and forth on this one. Uh, plastic bag use uh, for Northampton, Amherst, for example, I believe uh, exempts these categories. I don't know if that's because of the Gazette, uh, but anyhow, it's, it appears that a lot of the towns in our area exempt those uh, items. So we put it in there just to be uh, consistent with some of the surrounding towns. So if you uh, want to argue that, uh, no, they shouldn't get an exemption, I guess uh, any comments there might be helpful. All right, so let's open this up, Kathy. Um, can you scroll back up to the beginning of it? Sure. I'm, I'm kind of having problems with... The definitions? No, the very... Oh. Be, the, all the oh, way... I think oh, the, the introductory paragraph... Yeah, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not comfortable with that seeks to reduce and or eliminate the num number of single use bags. What, what, that is so open ended that you might as well, what's reduce? Like, we want to get rid of them, period. Yeah. I, I, that's just too vague, I think. So I think, I think what we ought to do is have Bruce send this to everybody. And at our next meeting, yeah. everybody yeah. will have had time to look at it, mark it up and say mm -hmm. things. And that the reason I don't want to go public with this yet is because at the end, there's a thing about the Board of Health mm -hmm. being um, involved in exempting certain organizations. And they haven't heard that yet. So I want to introduce that to them in person rather than sending them the document and saying, guess what? So if we everybody so do you consider us get that all together. Are, are we considered the public or can we weigh in on this and we'll just keep it to ourselves? Uh, yeah, very much for now. Keep it to yourself because the last thing we want is a series of folks writing letters to the Gazette saying this is the no straw law and, you know, what do we no. do for our elders and our children? So, you know, we need to form this and Jane is absolutely right. And Susie, I hear you rather than deliberating this now, read it yeah, over send us a copy so, and let us yeah okay. jane when is the deadline uh yeah, where we're fine. We, we're fine that we have a placeholder so we don't have as soon as we get it to them it's fine but we're okay okay good because that was a real concern bruce thank you for all the work you have all done right. on me okay yeah well, i'll send this uh, out to the uh committee members yeah. and um, okay there's All right. quite a bit of stuff there about straws and uh, exemptions yep. and hardships and everything. Yeah. So, Susie, the centerpiece item of today's agenda is the Hadley Climate Day on April 23rd. Yep. Um, take the lead. I know you're away next month, although you can join us from wherever. But um, Unfortunately, I won't be able to, um, okay. but um, I'm offline in in California. So anyway, um, let me share my screen to show you what's evolved. You know, the, the I, I took it as my job um, to invite people based on the agreement that I had from um, you all. So let me walk you through where it stands. And hang on, I need to and Susie, just so you know, once you have this formed, I have a few other people who are saying, oh, do you have anything in writing? You know, once we get to the point, yes, we'll have this. I, I mean, I have, you know, written invitations. So I have text now for it. And, and um, I want to talk with Catalina about um, the graphic design and the yeah. advertisement. The advertisement is going to be the next biggest thing. That's what I need most help on. Um, and, and one other item that I will show you in a moment, but okay. walk you through what we have so far. So, you know, we had welcome overview of the day with um, which I, Jack, I assigned you essentially um, to, to play that role, um, to open the, the day up. Um, you know, if you don't want to do it, we can, I'm sure share it. But anyway, that's, that's not here nor there because we can discuss it amongst ourselves. For the keynotes, we had said we would do three short presentations, Julie Brigham Gret, um, myself on adaptation and a person I'm currently still working on to, um, to confirm um, on 
giving an overview of on the mitigation. I, I know we had a different person there. I looked at his profile. It didn't fit with what we wanted. Um, and so I just went with this person, uh, Lauren Matizen uh, at You Can't Make It. But the reason I had her in mind and why she pointed me to this woman, Zara Dowling, is that um, these are people who work with local communities on climate change mitigation. So in other words, they understand the big picture, but they know what the issues are for small towns to actually do something on the, at their level. And I thought that would be the most appropriate and most useful to us. Um, so Julie said yes. Um, you know, I'm I'm <laughs> not hard to press to to um, give a short overview on the adaptation side, the resilience side. Then we talked about this facilitated solution panel. I have Denise uh, confirmed. I have Patty Gumbarini from the P uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission confirmed. She will speak about the role of planning and what needs to be done for drinking water. Um, I'm in conversation with Chris Gosha, who is an emergency response person, um, also works, he has, he's in Hamden County, I think, but um, he works right now for the uh, Planning Commission as well. So we'll see whether it's him or somebody else. Uh, I have invited uh, a woman who lives in Northampton. Um, she is, uh, has national stature, um, works for an organization called Healthcare Without Harm on what it means to provide low carbon resilient healthcare. Um, so we'll see whether that comes through. Everybody else so far has come through. So I'm pretty psyched. Brian Adams has said yes um, and will you know, appear. And then uh, Tony Morelli, who you all have mentioned for other reasons to be on our committee. Um, I had first um, approached Melissa O'Connor, who is also at UMass and is basically the lead person organizing all of Massachusetts uh, ecosystem, biodiversity, natural resource related adaptation efforts. Um, but she will just come back from vacation is not there. So she pointed me to Tony again. And I thought, okay, we're going to get this woman by now. <laughs> so, and she just confirmed. Um, Tony Lynn? Pardon me? Are yes. you talking about? Oh, Tony yeah. Lynn. Yes. And then, um, you know, we'll come back to the, the lunch. I just wanna quickly walk you through the rest of it here. Um, in the afternoon, we have this set of, you know, basically interactive activities, which we have yet to discuss what they're gonna be about and, and how to shape them. But um, I got some really good names for people. Um, and, and then we had already come up with some, but I don't have the contact information and need them. So for example, um, for someone who in her day job already works with uh, students and youth, um, I thought she would be great. Um, Brittany Gudermus, I think is her name, yeah. uh, or how you pronounce it. I don't know, you might know her. She is with M Mass Audubon um, and comes to schools all the time. So she is totally in, in the material already. Jack, you would you know be able to help teachers yeah. um, with how they can engage people. Kathy, you had mentioned to you wanted to do something on what households could do. So maybe- And also composting. I, I wanna, I think we should be able to talk to people about backyard composting and provide compost bins that they can buy for cheap. Yeah, so so I think it would be great if it was more than the composting, but you know, that's why I have the, the plus- Well, separate. right, other things like, yeah. Energy efficiency, light bulbs, you know, insulation. Yeah, bamboo toilet anyway. paper, all that stuff. Yeah, all of that stuff. So then you had mentioned Michael Doctor um, to do something, you know, on the food systems. I don't have a contact for him, so I can't invite them. So Susie, um, every time I send out a whole an email to the whole group, the Michael on our list is Michael Doctor. Okay, great. So then I can, then I have him. Okay. So he actually is part of this committee. He was here from the very first meeting. He just um, he's been dealing with a lot these last few years as he sort of uh, transitions his winter roots business. Okay. Well, I'll see if he's interested. Otherwise, yeah. I have another um, farmer in in mind, and I know there were several others that you have listed. Um, the other person I was uh, was mentioned, um, was someone from the Public Health Institute of Western Massachusetts. Um, so she could, you know, do something on the for healthcare providers if we wanted to have someone there. Um, and and then 
I, I, someone had mentioned Zach Swan for, and yep. from Builders, but I don't have a, a contact there. And Jane, you had mentioned to bring in the co-op maybe to uh, see if they could be there as, you know, an example of a business that could also say, and here's what we did and here's what you can do. Um, Susan, I have you on, on this list, uh, potentially with uh, my friend and colleague, Lenore Brick from Amherst. I don't know if you know her. You two know each other very closely. Um, so that would be wonderful if, if, you know, but I obviously haven't sent you an invitation. Uh, Jane, you had mentioned uh, Dina Stander. I don't know if we want to go to down that road. And we have a lot of these little working groups, breakout groups. So I just wanted to see if people wanted to go down that road. But let me just finish quickly to okay. where else we are. Catalina, this one here is uh, the, the project or a theater piece, which I assume is confirmed. I do have a number of additional co-facilitators for the community conversations, but you know, I'll, I'll come back to this in a moment. A lot of this hinges on people showing up, right? And how many people we need. So a lot of what needs to happen now is advertisement, <laughs> writing and talking to this. The other last thing I wanna say is that I got Jo Comerford uh, confirmed. She's absolutely delighted about what we're doing, but she's on vacation. Uh, it's school vacation week. Um, and so she's away that particular week, but she uh, agreed that she would record something for five minutes. Um, I'm yet to hear back from Natalie Blaze. And I was wondering if Carolyn would be good to invite to, to this. Um, I know there are various conversations she's already oh, in around uh, flood, the levee, flood protection and all that stuff with FEMA. So, you know, she's obviously already in this line of thinking, and I just wonder if it would be helpful to have her speak as a both, you know, maybe at the opening or maybe maybe in the closing. I think it'd be lovely to have, you know, local and state represented at the end. So, yeah, Susie, I think it's a matter of courtesy, but also she can bring a lot to this. So, yeah, yes, I, that's yeah. So maybe Jane, this is um, in your ballpark to bring her to the table. Is that is that my right estimation? I'm happy to do that, and I'm sure she'll be thrilled. Okay, very. Cool. I need a little a little more scope, um, not instantly about what it is you would like her to be doing. Yep, specifically. And yep. uh, she she really has the town's interest at her best heart and is all for this energy uh, program and what the Climate Control Committee is doing. So I'm sure she'll be happy. Great. Um, Where's well, that hand? Making a to-do list um, to follow up. So I guess what I'm trying to say here to you is things are coming together nicely as far as the, the substance is concerned. Um, you know, in terms of us actually having a program, having something. Um, what I think are the crucial pieces that need to happen um, besides filling the remaining gaps or making, you know, just following up with people um, are the interactive activities um, and to basically do advertisements so people know this is happening and we're beginning to put leaflets out. We're beginning to have it, you know, I don't know, if it's a bunch of posters, I'm happy to go to, you know, to Staples and print a bunch of things out. I just need to have maybe the design help. I have, you know, the content won't be hard to, to develop. Um, but Catalina, maybe it would be helpful if we hear from you for a moment on the, the art piece, the theater piece, and the graphic design piece that you yeah. have at, at yeah. the you are Catalina, I go, and then I know Kathy has a hand up for a question or a comment. So um, Susan and Mike. And I know Michelle know. has other things, but Catalina, go ahead. Okay, so um, the um, the twelve to one p.m. that will be music, an exhibition. It will work very well. Um, we will I have several people who would like to perform music. Well, we have the exhibition that is that we already have a calling, or we have the, 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 the press release for calling for art, um, uh, poetry, um, uh, pictures that inspire people to, um, to, uh, for, to, prote to be, protect the earth and to uh, be proactive about taking action against climate change. Um, so the idea is like, 
people will like like they, they I love Hadley people submit poetry submit po uh, uh, pictures submit artwork even dances and then we select that and we uh, print it um, with a very beautiful and make an exhibition of that while at the same time we will have some music um, and we will do readings of poetry and we love that having reading poetry and music poetry and music um, uh, I, I, because I'm in the, with the Hadley Cultural Council, um, we have some extra money that I from out of the blue in that like we have extra money that I am. Um, we have a meeting on the 15th. I'm going to ask them, to us, <laughs> to uh, use that as a project uh, from Hadley getting that money to print um, the the uh, oh, wow. artwork and the um, pictures and the poetry and writing. I would like, I love to have like a essay of one one page of a say about how like convince people we need to to do action for climate change against climate change. So, so that's the idea for the uh, 12 to 1. Um, now they want a project air at 12:15 is um, a theater play written by children and a professional writer and we will be uh, they will be acting um, with that um, and uh, we may have some improvisation about that. I, we have an amazing teacher that she will do that. Um, I think we'll go just like a, for um, 45 minutes. More than that, I don't think, uh, Susie. You give us a lot of time there. So um, I think 45 minutes will be uh, good enough. Uh, you mean the, the piece in the, in the afternoon from two Yes. On? Yeah, it's right. because you know, there's the, con the community conversation. So okay. if you... Actually, it's, you know, even if it's less, it would be great just to have enough time there for the Okay, for so, the so let's say half an hour. Half an hour would be plenty of, of time. So 2.15 to uh, 2.45, yes. Right. So the play is already written, written of multi arts. We did an amazing presentation where um, it's always a whole story about what happened if we don't take care of the earth. And a whole story about like in 3,000, what like if, if we don't take care of all the trees and the waters and everything and very imaginative um striking and also but with hope with hope about taking action so that's that's what Perfect. i have okay now with the hadley cultural council lou she did a beautiful picture a poster about promoting i love hadley she is willing to do a, a poster mm -hmm. also promoting uh, Hadley climate change um, with the uh, agreement that we allow her to put her, her information in the bottom. So what I will need, Susie, is uh, the, the scope, you know, uh, invitation, Hadley climate change this day. Um, we will have, we don't have to say all what we have, but uh, if we do, we don't have a, a, a website, isn't it yet? No, C could you put me in touch with her? I mean, just- yeah introduce us perfect and, and i can maybe take it and, and excellent you know i will send you that the, introduction yes that would be great so wonderful yeah thank you okay we'll do that so that's it that's my information thanks so much carolina that's mm -hmm. oh i have another idea but that's that's something that i i don't know if anyone wants to uh help is this i wish if we could have a, a tree that we can give three to children and to families, like plant a tree in the name of your child. Yes, Jack. So to that, um, and you know, I think we'll have a round robin of people we've spoken to. I'm glad to see that Bar uh, that Denise Barstow confirmed. Um, Dave King at Gardener Supply, he's been invited. And last year around Arbor Day, they actually did free seedlings. So he said, once we have that more in place, we can do it. And also Brandy Phil is in charge of the shade tree committee. So those are two possibilities. Yeah, um, can I just follow yeah. on on this one? Um, sure. When I spoke with folks from the uh, planning um, commission, they told me that the uh, uh, Hadley Climate um, Garden Center also has given away rain barrels. So in the spirit of what you know, anyone can do in their own home, um, they wanted to raffle off 
um, basically one or two rain barrels. And I thought that would be really fun. Yeah. yeah. So that was gardeners, did you say, Susie? Yeah, uh, rain barrel for a raffle from the Hadley Garden Center. So now it's gardeners. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. great. So uh, we just need to figure out who is following up with him. Jack, can you do that? Yeah, because I, I can do that. I can follow up with Dave. He wasn't sure if he would have somebody from the store um, to kind of be around and all that on the seedling um, distribution, if they can even do it. I will also check in if it's possible for the shade tree committee. Okay. Yeah, if it's possible, I don't know, for maybe this year is not, but in the future, could we get trees? Like we will give a tree to a child with the name of the child. We'll take a picture and we we'll create a whole thing. This is Johnny with his tree. And in one year, Johnny with his tree. So this is the carbon that Johnny's tree has been able to collect and, and, and the air, like a, the uh, oxygen, oxygen that the, the Johnny tree has been able to provide. A way to get families, I get, I've got children uh, uh, um, uh, involved in this. So this is one of one of my ideas. But anyway, I, I think that's a, a great late. idea. But I think we should do it with the seedlings. A, a decent sized tree is very expensive. Yeah. I mean, very expensive. Well, and also there's kind of a shortage due to the pandemic. And a lot of work, also a lot of work to plant and so forth. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing. Susan and Michelle have both been waiting. Yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. And so I think we should honor that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have a, a few questions. And Andy's here, by the way, my husband right next to me who offered to videotape this. Yep. Um, if you're interested. And I know Hadley Media is also on the call. A quick one, not that important, is why Natalie Blaze instead of Dan Carey, who's our rep. That was my yeah. question. Yeah. I know uh, Sunder we do a lot of things with Sunderland in terms of public safety, maybe emergency response, but that's something to put out to you. There's another- Michelle, Michelle, can I just quickly answer it? Um, and sure. the quick answer to it, which is simply that I know Natalie and it was my, you know, personally, so, and I had conversations with her because she has an interest in resilience building um, and she often works with Joe. So it, it was simply that, but I'm, I haven't heard back from her. So if you give me the contact information, I am more than happy to contact the, our rep. Okay. I'd like to really second James Carey because he, you know, he's on the ENRA committee, but I don't think yeah. he's really good on, yeah, on, on the climate Dan really. What? Um, Dan, he, he's not. Oh, I always say James. Yeah, Dan. Sorry, Dan. No, I agree. We need to pull him in because I don't. Yeah. Think he's, this is not his area of expertise. So. And we'll be not. happy to join. He likes to do. He likes to do things with Hadley. So, so Jane, can you issue. can you take that on in inviting Dan? If, if I don't have to. Wait, wait, wait. I will wait, invite him. Yeah. Wait, wait, just just give me the email addresses. I, I'd like to, you know, keep just a. Okay. A, but that I will send you his email, Susie. <laughs> I'm more and than happy to, to, you know, use and abuse you all for like all your contacts. That's wonderful. Yeah. Just trying to uh, keep a, a record of who's invited and, and be yeah. able to coordinate it in one agenda. And Susie, I know Brittany. Um, I, I've worked with her. She actually was sort of a former student of mine. And um, I know Zach and I'll send you their contact information. Cool. Okay. Cool. Oh, okay. Who was next? Where were we at? Um, I, I wasn't done. I was just had a few yeah. little quick points. Um, one is, are you going to have tabling by organizations? That's a place where Friends of Lake Warner could be or at least have materials. Plus you have people like Cars, Cider House, which is doing integrated raising of um, sheep alongside the orchard with fewer fuel inputs. There's a lot of interesting low carbon farming. that's farm a great idea. Happening. Hadley. So there's cars, there's possibly stone soup, Kestrel, Next Barn Over, um, Astarte, um, Winter Michelle. Roof. Michelle. So there's a list of people that maybe have a table. It's wonderful, the idea. We haven't gotten to it yet. We had a, 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 a document where people offered those names for potential sponsors and tabling and advertisement. It's all those opportunities. That's what my, exactly my point is. We need to now reach out to all those people. So I'm putting uh, that link into the doc, into the chat in a moment so that you can all add these names with who the contact person 
And if anybody is willing to reach out to them, oh, please, my day job yeah. is already 80 hours. I'd love to have your, your help. Okay. So can you put that document, send it to us, not in the chat. I have trouble getting things out of the chat to work on. Me, me too. And I'll get it from Marion or Jane or someone. I, I can't. Uh, well, if yep, you want to yep. put it in the chat, I'll get it. And then I'll send it to you guys. And, okay. and two more quick comments. Um, Andy's videotaping so you can be in touch with him. Outdoors as much as possible if the weather is good. I you are COVID um, um, cautious. And also, Stephanie, um, I don't know if it's Chicarello or Cicarello over. Chicarello. Yeah. She is a wonderful resource. She is the one who would know where to get maybe rain barrels at cut rate to offer to the public or um, little compost containers or whatever. So think about contacting her. She's been very supportive to Friends of Lake Warner. And that's it. Thank you. Super helpful. Uh, Jane and Michelle, I just shared the documents with you. Thank you. Okay. So that's done. I have a question, uh, yeah. a logistical question. Have we specifically asked the library and the senior center if we can have these dates? And do if, I know there was some conversation about how nice it would be if we took, if we have a tent, we put it on the library's, <clears throat> excuse me, front lawn out by Middle Street. So it doesn't inhibit any parking. It's highly visible. It's still close by. But if we do that, I think we have to ask town for permission because that's town land. And I don't want put, to get- Put trouble. what out there? A tent. Oh. A big tent. So that if the weather is inclement or hot or anything else, it's an organizational area to be set up. Yeah, if Susie, go ahead. And I have a comment on the library. Well, and, and I guess this is the conversation that takes us back to Bruce's um, taking a look at the, the money side of this. Um, so I don't know whether we have time for that, but I think we have to take the time for this right now to um, at least look over that. I know, Bruce, you had two different scenarios. One was really low cost, but the minute we're talking about a big tent, rental, any you know, tables and all that stuff, that ramps up the price tag. So can you run us through the, hang on, Kathy, let's just sure. for a minute. Um, yeah, can we sure. just uh, hear the outlines of that? Yeah, and just to confirm that, uh, the senior center is confirmed. So I, I confirmed it. So, uh, so anyhow, you. with the tent, uh, I just called one place. Um, I, I think they changed the name, what we think of as Taylor Rental on uh, King Street. And uh, I think it'd be about $450 to rent a 20 by 40 uh, tent. Uh, then if you were to rent uh, tables or chairs, uh, you know, they rented by the table and chairs. And I didn't write that down, but uh, probably for um, some, uh, we could probably bring out tables and chairs so we wouldn't have to rent them. But if we did, it, I'd say it cost another couple hundred dollars. So, uh, so I didn't really drill down because I wasn't sure if we were going to go that way. And maybe we can get uh, a tent uh, donated. Uh, so the tent we'd get from them would be, uh, obviously a commercial tent that would be, um, you know, fairly safe and they would probably, they would put it up and take it down. One of the things I know from experience is if you have a tent, you have to get a tent permit. There wouldn't be a charge for that because we're a town organization, but it has to be fire retardant and guaranteed. And I had a friend who had a tent, but it's not fire retardant, so it's not available to us because yeah. the town will not approve it for public use. Okay, so um, let me tell you that the library is reserved from the moment they open through the moment that they close. So that day from 10 to 3 with a little flexibility, thanks to Patrick Bereza. So um, I did reserve the community room in the library for that day. So we have that space. Yep, and at the senior center, we had maybe, uh, I think Jane, we counted together, uh, maybe six or seven breakout spaces if we were forced indoors. I, you know, and when we're talking about money raising, who's setting up tents, will we need porta potties? I, I guess I would keep arguing we have two big, beautiful buildings. 
Yeah, I thought <laughs> we just had decided we're going to use the building. I don't understand this discussion about tents. Yeah. yeah the only uh, reason for a tent, and maybe we don't need it, is if, if it was raining, you couldn't bring 100 people into a building. Why not? Because of the current COVID uh, restrictions. There's no way you can bring 100 people into the um, senior center, I don't think. Safe, yeah, safe. Well, if you spread them out, you could, but the library would have trouble with that number. Right, right, but you can have breakout spaces between the two zones. Oh, yeah, uh, the event day, you want everybody together. Yeah, I we, think we, so. can't up. Get, we can't put 100 people in the dining room of the senior center. It or, depends upon what the COVID restrictions are for the town right. at that point. Oh, my yes, God. Yes, the, the dining room is... is scheduled with no problems for 144 people right but but then you can also COVID, have then there's restrictions yeah you can oh. have overflow in the back room and things like that so i think that the issue with overflow no. is that, that we need to somehow then have a way to to transfer audio visual whatever you know like maybe via the camera michelle your your idea of videotaping so that you know it can be shown somewhere else on on from um, big monitors in say the library or something otherwise it's i don't know how we're going to do this I mean, you know we we have in, initially we had said we're hoping for 200 plus people i don't know if that's that's okay. realistic, but right. so Kathy, I think your hand was up first, but well, then my list is just building so All right. a couple of things as far as where we're going to have it. Oh my gosh, if we can't even fit a hundred people into either building, what are we doing? What about having it at the high school in the cafeteria, like one big room? We've got, I mean, why are we doing it if we cannot fit people in the building? This is crazy. It's the COVID restrictions, yeah. All right. All right. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is uh, food, forget about food trucks. They all want a minimum us to guarantee them $2,000 worth of business, which we cannot do. So it occurred to me, you know, we have this grant money available. Some of it has been designated for the composting at the elementary school. But two things I noticed that, um, Deerfield is doing for their climate day forum is number one, they're having people register, not, not pay, but just register to say they're coming. That way they have an idea of how many people are coming. Mm -hmm. Number two, they are get, they're offering lunch. So I went, thought, okay, how could we offer lunch without it being ridiculously expensive and easy to do? And it occurred to me, pizza, we could get Highland pizza, you know, 24 pizzas, 16 inch pizzas would feed about a hundred people at least and cost us about $450, which we could use out of that grant money. So that's, as far as food is concerned, maybe that would be a draw if we're, if we're providing lunch. Um, and I think we should consider the, the registration bit, you know, so we have some idea, but we got to get serious about where we're having this. I mean, yeah. we want a lot of people to come, but then we're going to use buildings where we can't fit them. So what are we doing? I so hold on, Marion. I, I couldn't tell if you were stretching or if it's been a hand up. It's not I, clear. I have my hand up. I have my okay. hand up. Um, you know, just because I'm I'm a gardener and I I work a lot with like native perennials and trees and plants. Um you know, and I was just thinking about Catalina and connecting children and, and planting, you know, we do need to think about the young people. We want young people to come. We want young families to come. So I think we just need to think about um, some activities and ways to engage young people. So that was one thought I had, which maybe is, you know, so anyway, so there's that. And, um, you know, do do we want to think about pollinators, which is like a whole other, a whole yeah, other side of, this, of, of the world, but, you know, of this topic, but do we want to think about that? And you're thinking about bringing gardener supply and, you know, the other folks. And so I guess just 
do we want to be thinking about that? I, I don't have anything concrete right now. Susie, yeah. go ahead. So I would like to not change this day to be from beginning to end also for children. It's a very mm-hmm. different program. It yeah. would be a very different set of speakers. I gotcha. think if we have those breakout places mm-hmm. where there is something for the youth, there's something for teachers, something for family, what a household. Gotcha. That to me is, I feel like a place where we can, mm-hmm. that, but it would be a very different program and very different sets of speakers. Yep. Gotcha. What Bruce? I can say to that topic, Marion, I'm yeah. into all that stuff too. And I think a, a, a different way to do you know introduce that stuff and do some activities with kids is with the children's librarian mm-hmm. um and, the, and that cool kids room in the li- library actually has a door that opens mm-hmm. to the outside expressly so maybe we could get kids involved in planting a butterfly garden out there right. or whatever yeah. so that's a way to get kids involved, but not on this day. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Bruce, gotcha. go ahead. Yeah, I was just getting back to the building. I think um, it's you know this will be dependent on the weather, but I think the keynote speaker, or the you know the, the beginning of the event can be uh, outdoors. We have um, if it's nice weather, we have the uh, front porch of the uh, senior center. We also have the shelter that's used for the day, right? but you could. Uh, have a, spe- a set of speakers uh, situated there and everybody would be standing out in the campus uh, parking lot. <clears throat> so uh, other than that, I don't see how you can. Um... So that, I think that's the uh, assumption you have to make if you're going to stick to the senior center and the library. What the, a lot of it we would hold outside. Well, no, I think the first part, all these smaller groups can all go inside safely. But they can't all go inside. Yes, you can. Oh, you if we break them up between yeah. the two buildings. Yeah, yeah. We have six or seven spaces in the senior center and a couple, two or three spaces in the library. All right. So I think we need to say the number. How many people can be in the senior center at one time? Depends on which room they're in. No, can all all the rooms. Combined at the same yeah. time? I don't know. I'll get that number for you. I mean, isn't that what we were planning on doing is having something set up in one room? And that, other- I think that the key, uh, Kathy, you said the right thing and the key thing, which is that, you know, the speakers are going to be on a stage. They're going to give presentations. They're going to be, you know, outdoors is very difficult to do that with if you have any visuals that you want to show. Um, and it's the big factor of, of uh, whatever the weather is that day, right? Nobody is going to stand for 45 minutes listening to any speeches. It's just not going to happen or to, for another 45 minutes to listen to a discussion. So we do need a room that's big enough for the first part where people take in information and, and you know, are engaged in conversation. And if, you know, I don't know what your expectation is or how likely it is we're going to go over 100. But if we're going to go over 100, we need to have a room where people can sit. In- right. Yeah. Well, and Kathy- I just feel like I know we love our new buildings. I, I love them. I think they're wonderful. But for this event, we need a room that's big enough for everyone. Or it's going to Kathy, be- I think I think we aren't in a position to offer the school. I think with the cleaning rules and cleaning protocols in the middle of a pandemic with lots of kids on the heat, tail end of a school vacation week, I think we really aren't in a position to say, let's grab the cafeteria. And Jane, I don't know. Okay, the only reason I the thought other of thing, that. The other thing the schools do during vacation week is they varnish the floors, they paint okay. rooms, they all do right. all kinds of things. I we can yeah. First, if we're going to ask for pre-registration, we may decide that we're going to limit it. And that would encourage people to register. And it's our first time. It, it may be a bust. I don't think it will, but you never know. So I think if we're, you know, if we go for 150, I'm sure we can accommodate those between the two buildings. Okay. So there have been a number of people who've been really patient. Sue, so, um, Catalina, what other thoughts hearing everybody else sharing their ideas? What other things aren't we considering? What other things do we need to take on now? And then Susie again, 
knowing your time's limited and you're not available next month, we'll shift back to you. So Catalina and, and Jane, do you guys want to go first since your hands are up? Yeah, I, I will really, uh, first, I'm going to say like, let's be humble. And we don't know how many people is going to show up. We hope that would people show up. So um, I believe that with the pre-registration saying that we really want to be able to accommodate everybody, I, I love that idea that we need to uh, reserve your spot because um, we want to accommodate comfortable and safety everybody. Um, one of the idea that I think like if in the senior center, um, cafeteria or the place where are the tables but then we can have like a, uh, uh, um, speakers that are in the other part where we have where we get the, the meeting so in a way we are adding that two things people sitting in in the extra room and listening to this to the to the um presentation so that would create we can fit a hundred people in that living room area no, 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 between both. the two spaces. Both, yeah. The two. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also right. have videos in all the other rooms that are going to be breakout rooms, if you will. And I suspect with a little work, John Harrison could figure out how we could get the main speakers projected into those other rooms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, so what I will say, let's be creative. Let's not put obstacles about say like, oh, we cannot be, we have to go to another room. Let's let's start let's start now. And maybe next year we say, oh my God, look at this. This work did this didn't didn't work. So uh, the important thing <laughs> is to create the awareness that we need to do something and we are inviting the whole community to participate in this. So with that, that <laughs> nice cat. I love your cat. <laughs> oh, so pretty. Yeah. Um, let's see, Susan. Oh, um, you know, I, I this whole idea is so exciting. But I have to say, I'm kind of, I don't want to be the voice of doom here, but um, I was totally picturing this out on the green. I don't know for some reason I, I just thought, oh well, that's what where it's going to happen outside. Um, is it realistic? I mean, will the numbers be down low enough that, that it's going to feel safe to have a hundred people in a room? Well, they will be if we cap it like they're doing in Deerfield at a certain number that okay. pre-registered. Okay. You know, so they're doing it at a high school gym. They're doing it in a huge It doesn't room. matter where you do it. If you cap it, it's then you have to air. control about how many people come. Right. Yeah. But Susan, the, the point was that outdoors, we would need a really, really big tent to rent a really big tent to essentially ensure that we can have it outside because we can't predict the weather. Mm. So in and order to avoid that, to we just said, let's have it indoors and use those two spaces that we have for free. Right. And then we, right. We need tables, chairs, we need porta potties, we need police. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden it was turning into a $10,000 endeavor. Yeah, no. before you know it, our capacity. We have yeah. maybe eight hundred, nine hundred dollars we can spend. Um, Marion, uh, did we fully take on any of your questions or comments? I don't. I'm all set. Okay. All set. Yep. And then this feels like Hollywood Squares. Some of you will know what I'm talking about, Michelle just thinking about all the logistics one thing what i might suggest is you talk to patrick about having books selected at the library for reading ahead so, of is, so what we did is patrick um and sue sue's coordinating a community reads and that is actually something that's on the agenda um this would probably be a good time i have a book that i'd like to suggest um and one, I don't know how many copies that they have funding for, but they are all behind us, Michelle, on a community yeah. read. Yeah. But I'd also suggest that books get put placed in the children's area for children to read mm -hmm. on Earth Day or on, you know, yeah. climate or whatever. And I don't know if anybody is in touch with. See, are the schools doing something that we can showcase? the students work around Earth Day? 
They are not, but I do know that MJ Eustace, who is in charge of cooler communities, which involves eight schools, um, she would love to be part of this and just show what schools can do, how these schools chose not to be part of cooler communities. They just couldn't handle it this year with everything going on with the pandemic. Um, where I teach, we took it on, we're part of that grant. And, and one more question for you all. This is not on the earth. The, um, the plastic bag bin, are you trying to get it in for this spring town meeting? It Which is in for this spring town it meeting. It is in. Oh, okay. As, yes. Okay. So there was yep. a deadline on that. Yes. So No, we, okay. they know we're coming. Okay. okay. I have another publicity possibility, which is the Senior Center produces a program on the first Thursday of each month at 3 at Produce It. I would like to invite people from the Climate Change Committee to talk about this event. And then it's recorded. It's on Hadley Media YouTube afterwards. Oh, good idea. Sure. Yeah, and yeah. I, Jane, and when I, is the meeting? It's what, at 3 o'clock on the first Thursday in April. Um, let me check my calendar. I think I can do that. What I envision is like maybe Bruce talking a few minutes about the bag and the plastic band because this will go out before town meeting, which would also be useful. It could be Susie talking about the overview of this. It could be Jack talking about green communities and what we're doing. It's it's like a 45 yeah, minute yeah. conversation. We have a really good uh, moderator, Sharon Howard. I don't know if you all know her, but she's really good about being the interviewer. Yeah. So can I sign you guys up for that? Sure, put me toward the end. That's the last day of the marking period. So all the students will need me till four o'clock that day. Um, is speaking, of, is speaking of publicity, Susie, I'm happy to contact Monty Belmonte, who does a lot. Well, he's a DJ on the river. And I know when we had the spring cleaning day last year, he did an interview and we were able to get that out and spread the word. Great idea. Um, Great. He's, he's a very he's a positive force. Yep. Recommend Amherst copies for printing instead of staples and tell them it's a local yeah. event. They're very yes. supportive. Yeah. I, I highly recommend using local small businesses. Also, um, somebody should probably contact Jill Kaufman of NEPM. She lives in Hadley. They have um, a, a weekly radio sh show about local events. You could get on that and there definitely could be announcements during regular programming. So cool. what I'd like to do um, is to gather all these ideas in one place and then do this in a sort of coordinated fashion so that everyone sort of sings from the same song sheet. When they go out, you have the same you know, flyers, you have the same I don't know, whatever they need, right? Yeah, so yeah. Can, can I ask you all to just like send it to me, whatever ideas you just all raised so I can put it together and then I can come back with, you know, like I, I need to coordinate with you, Catalina and, and the graphic designer when we have that, you know, so, but, but I, I love all these ideas. I think they're absolutely great. Um, I think people had also already put some ideas out. You saw that I put another spreadsheet in the chat, which is um, the link to the spreadsheet where I asked for partners and sponsors and all these possibilities, right? So that's a good place for you to put in um, the ideas you had on you know, who could work with us. Um, Just so you all know, Mother's Club has already been contacted, so they're in the loop, and also the Hadley Girl Scouts. Well, so they're all in the loop, but what does it mean, Jack? You know, I don't know um, what they're doing. So, I don't uh, know they, they, the Mother's Club knows that we're doing the hat, the spring cleaning day on the 9th, and they know that they're we're doing this day on the 23rd. So they right. they are doing their stuff, but they're also spreading the word for us. So when it comes to in the loop, that's what they're doing. Didn't okay, the Girl so Scouts want to actually do something on our climate day. Um, that's something we can talk about later. They just want to hear more about it to figure out if they can be, okay. if, you know. So I think what, what would be great is, you know, if we had all these ideas and and then once we have a flyer, <laughs> send it to you and you can pass it on to all these people that that you the networks, right? And 
uh, next door neighbor and I don't know all these other places Facebook pages I don't know if the town has any way to spread more stuff but you know that would be sort of the the maybe the approach to get to 100 and we need to set up a registration site so we can cap it all that stuff so please send it to me and I'll try to put it together and coordinate it yeah but Jane, I'm not here on the seventh. Um, I realize I'm going to be in Hawaii at that time for work, unfortunately. So um, maybe we'll work it out. You know, who can take that one on instead? Then okay. The, uh, oh, Kathleen, can I just ask when you talk to your graphic organizer? Can I sort of see what they're doing because we can use a similar design for the cleanup day and have it like a unified logo. Thank you. I think that's all from my side. So, Jack, you started to say a book you thought should be yes. on the like Earth Day reading list. Were we going to do that now? Suggest books or no? Um, I had suggested Saving Us by Catherine Hayhoe. Okay. So I don't know if other people have other ones that they want to offer. I love braiding sweet grass, sweet grass. I haven't read the Catherine Hayhoe book, but I've read a bunch of her essays and I think it's um, hopeful and constructive. And I love braiding sweet grass, but I think the Hayhoe's book is more to the moment of activating Probably people. Probably so. Yeah. I'd put in another suggestion there, uh, a book called All We Can Save. Yeah, it's a bunch of short essays. Um, Susan and I did go over the draft for the climate change um, emer emergency yeah. declaration. Um, it is the kind of thing where I think we all need to put our eyes on it and and comment and like, look over it and like tweak it. And I, it's, it's a pretty serious piece of writing. And in order to kind of move forward on it, we all need to look at it. So um, I did send it, I sent it to Jack who sent it out to you. And I also included two other uh, templates for declarations, just so you can see differences between, but really the most important one is to look at the Hadley declaration and then um, just basically um, look over it and make comments. And then at our next meeting, um, we can present it to you and just like decide how we're gonna kind of move forward from, from here with that. So, so similarly to how we're looking at um, Bruce and Jane's bylaw, we can preview this and be ready to share it. Remember, um, Bruce, Marion, by all means, you know, if a few days before our next meeting on March 10th, I believe that's right. I think that's the next second Thursday. Um, if you want to just repeat it and, you know, put it back out and just remind us of our homework, please do. Will do. Thanks, Marion. And I think you said Susan was working with you as well. Yeah, Susan and I met today and we're, we, we sort of tweaked it some. You might. Something that we were talking about is, I don't know if maybe you've all thought of this already, but um, thinking about energy sources, um, you know, we have that landfill that would be such a perfect spot for solar to putting up They're a, working on that. The town is already working on that location. Oh, that's great. Okay. That's exciting news. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting in an in email exchange with the folks from Eversource about another energy related issue. They were very proudly saying about what they're doing with the streetlights. Jane, can you bring us up to date? So um, David Phil has made an arrangement to have all of our street lights changed to LED lights to use less energy. And they have a grant from Eversource. So basically it's not gonna cost the town anything. And it will save us in the long run in terms of how much electricity is used. And Jane, 
can you just be careful? I know, um, and Michelle is tuned into this, a number of us from town said, you know, getting sort of the lumens right, you know, there are some things that- um, Yes, that was brought up at the meeting. Okay. And they're working on that, they're aware is, of it. Is that for the dark sky? Yeah. Are you talking? It, Michelle, you talked to that. Do you want to speak well, on it? Oh, it's to the dark sky. Yeah, yeah. It's well to the dark sky, but also when um, LEDs are too bright, too on the blue spectrum and ill-placed, it's bad for animals. It's bad for people, especially right. older people with glare. So it really has to be done right. Um, and I was yeah, pushing we for that. more yellow. yellow. But th th this gave me an idea that I totally forgot about. I think we should have a, a tabling for the um, electricity aggregation climate day so that people who have not already signed or who recycled their um, sheets can get the information about signing on Good idea. to the green energy program in Hadley specifically. Do you know what I mean? Is it already too late? Have, have deadlines passed for people to sign up on that? With no, the, it's open. You can sign up anytime. Okay, but wasn't sure I, about that. It's, it's. I think it's a good thing to put because we have it in Hadley now, and it's a good deal for. And um, not enough people know about it. Now, if you have solar on your house, is that going to sort of mess up the arrangement with EverSource and selling it back? Good. Mm. No, when you when you join this aggregation, what you're you still Eversource is still the um, the supplier. You are changing your supplier, and currently the supplier would be Constellation, um, and you have the option of buying a hundred percent green electricity if you want to. Yeah, I'm saying um, Bruce, you might run into the same thing. I work with Eversource because I have solar. Well, do you get an electric bill right now like everybody else? Uh, right now I have a credit with them because we've made more than what we've used. So Yeah, so it probably isn't anything that would be. Yeah. But, um, but if you're in that position, you're already doing the right thing. But some people right. have shady properties, can't do solar. No, gotcha. this is a great opportunity for people who, who don't have solar and would like to have 100% green electricity like yeah. from all coming from wind and solar. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess there's two things that I'm keeping an eye on the time. Marion, did you have any thoughts? You have a lot of expertise on this about the lighting issue, the LED lights, pollinators, mm -hmm. other creatures. Okay. I didn't know if you had insights into that. No, um, what we need to figure out what we need to figure out. And Susie has just prompted me is does the climate uh, emergency declaration need to be put on the town meeting for April? And if if so, then we've got to like get hopping. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you're going to have time to go through the process for the spring town meeting. Okay. The I wonder, Marion. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Seventeenth, I believe, to submit. Seventeenth of February. But that's. I think if you want to get it on, I can. Uh, probably get a placeholder for you without having the actual document. Okay. I think we we have a better shot at it after we have this awareness raising day, you know, that shows interest, that shows basically, I mean, the whole point of it was that we sort of create a sense of a public mandate that we want this. And, you know, if, I don't know, I just feel like if we follow it up with that and say, this is one of our next steps, come join our committee, come, you know, pound the pavement, whatever, that to me is like strategically a more sensible thing. That makes sense. Yep. Well, so, so are you, are you saying for the spring town meeting then or no? No. Okay. The spring, but in the, the, the one that fall. Oh. Oh. Right. Okay. Because spring town meeting is May 3rd, there'd hardly be any time between our event and the actual town meeting. But that is useful in terms of the plastic ban. Right, it, it would maybe we can build momentum for the fall. I think we may face more pushback on the plastic bag ban than we're anticipating. Oh. But why, why is that? 
Um, I think that there's a real undertow of conservatism in here. I think there's um, some farm groups, and Bruce, I know you're writing it carefully, but some others who yeah, are just so wedded to their plastic bags. I just, I worry about this. For um, what, though? What hmm? are they wedded to plastic bags? You mean for their produce? No, I, I'm not just saying farmers, Kathy. I'm just saying there's lots of different parents who use them as lunch bags for kids and things like that. So I, I'm just curious at how this will play out in the spring. I'm hopeful, of it's course. It's horrible that they do that. I have to say, when I did the trash audit at the elementary school, there weren't very many, but they're, they're horrible because they just end up in the trash. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know, but some stores like old paper bags, some stores in town are already doing it, yeah. even yeah. before yeah. we asked them yes. to. So, yeah. Michelle, there, there are some places that have Amherst has a styrofoam BAM, I believe. And I've been getting coffee at Cumberland Farms for this person I'm working for. That's the coffee she wants. Um, and I noticed in Amherst, the foam cups are number five recyclable. In Hadley, they're not. Mm. Um, yeah. Nasty. But corporate can obviously buy it. Oh well, yeah, they can easily make the switch. Oh yeah, probably with the same company. Get rid of styrofoam. <laughs> oh, definitely. The elementary school is using styro little styrofoam bowls for soup. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Hopefully, they'll be the minority. Yeah. Hmm. Susie, thanks for that link. That looks intriguing. I don't know all so this plastic and bags and stuff the thing is either we do it or we don't you know i mean let's push for getting it done as much as possible that's what i agree yeah. um as this meeting comes to a close and michelle we usually try to target about 90 minutes to 8 30 it's not a hard fast deadline but um it's just reasonable boy we've done a lot today um what are other things? Oh, spring cleaning day. The spring cleaning day. That's one thing. And that is April 9th, two that weeks is before April this 9th. event. Um, I already have trash bags in hand from our friends at Home Depot. But, um, you know, they donated hundreds of bags. So that's good, Michelle. I, you have to think about where you're taking them. I've done the source to see. And the Hadley dump has allowed us to bring the bags from our cleanup, which are not Hadley specific bags, to the Hadley dump for free on the source to see cleanup days. So somebody should contact the transfer station about, um, you know, wh whether they'll accept the That's bag. what we did last year, right? Yes. They allowed us to do that last year. Okay. Great. But you're right. We should confirm that they'll allow us to do it for this year. As far as I know, it's still Patrick Kennedy. Kathy, do you know? Is that the person? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll own that one. Okay. Oh, how do we decide um, what book? And I hope the library hasn't already put in their order. I asked Patrick to hold and not decide until this meeting. Why don't we go with the Catherine Hayhoe book? <clears throat> yeah. Several people said it. Yeah, that's that. what I think. Yeah. Uh, it, but do we have consensus, Susie? I know you had put out um, All We Can Save, and I've, I've read that. I, I'm totally fine. You know, Catherine's book is lovely, and she's a good friend of mine, so I'm happy to yeah. come up. Do you happen to know her well enough to ask if it's coming out in paperback in the next few weeks? Sure, I can ask her. Please, we can get more copies. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Michelle, thanks for joining us. Sarah, uh, Susan, thanks for being part of us. Yeah, you guys, thank you. Thanks. Bruce, Jane, Susie, Kathy. It's Catalina, everybody's leading the way in different ways. It really feels like things are happening. It's a wonderful feeling.